Jersey guy, do you think he'll have a full head of gray hairs before Christmas? Preds lose 3-1 Saturday night inside Bridgestone Arena. This team has now lost five in a row. They're on an 0-4-1 streak, and they have not won a game in North America since winning their first two games overseas. Something has got to give. When is the bleeding going to stop? Before this game started, David Poyle, general manager of the Nashville Predators, was honored for being a general manager through 3,000 NHL games through his first 15 years as a general manager when he was with the Capitals and every game thus far in Preds history. Very commendable, even though much of the fan base is annoyed with him right now. I can't believe it took until game seven of the season for me to finally get the Bally Sports feed for a Preds home game, but it's nice to have the call even though it's a little corporate sometimes, along with the home fans cheering this on, trying to break the streak. Preds do have the early jump. They're desperate to try and break out of this funk as Nito Niederreiter and Cole Smith both have great chances to open the scoring. Unfortunately, once again, maybe this time by allowing the first goal, which is exactly what the Preds do, can fire them up to fight back instead of having a lead and choking it away like the last two games because that's what Kevin Hayes does through a screen provided by Dante Fabro on his own goalie and he beats Soros to open the scoring flyers up one nothing just over five minutes into the first period Flyers look to extend their lead and go up 2-0. Farabee takes an innocent-looking shot that gets by Soros, who sees it at the last moment and is able to sweep it away with his stick one-handed. Keep it out. It just grazes the line, doesn't cross it, and it's still a 1-0 Flyers lead. Reds would earn the first power play in this game as Provolov takes a stupid cross-checking penalty on McCarron, who's prone down on the ice. And of course, the Preds don't convert. A fight between Cole Smith and Sealer of the Flyers late in the first period does nothing to fire up the Preds. Preds are out shooting the Flyers 12-6 by the conclusion of the first period, and they were hoping to only go into the locker room at worst, trailing 1-0, but Zach McEwen is able to beat Saros, and now the Preds are in a 2-0 hole. After an initial rush by the Preds in the second period, the Flyers are really taking it to the Preds. One minute, two minutes, almost three minutes of control of the puck, barely getting out of the Preds zone. Flyers keeping it in. Saros finally gets control of it, covers it, and gets a whistle. I'm amazed the Flyers weren't able to convert there and put the game out of reach at that point. Things go from bad to worse because about six minutes into the middle frame, scary situation when Borieski goes for the puck and gets hit. It was an innocent hit, nothing wrong with it, but he gets hit behind the Preds zone, behind the Preds net, and he hits his head, probably on his chin, off of the dasher board on the end board, and he's down. For a few minutes, the training staff comes out the crowd goes silent, the players go silent. Eventually, they're able to get Borieski off of the ice on a stretcher, and he goes to Vanderbilt Medical Center, and it would be later be reported that when he did leave, thank God he was conscious and had movement in all of his extremities. You just hope he's okay, recovers well, and can get back as soon as possible. No rush. His health is most important, but he is such a hard worker on the back end. You just know the Preds would love to have him in the lineup. So I hope you're okay, Mark. After play resumes, the Flyers and the Preds exchange penalties. And when it's the Preds' turn to be on the power play, their best chance comes with Matt Duchesne getting a backhander that lands in Carter Hart's glove keeping the lead at 2 nothing. Final seconds tick down in the second period, and I will give the Preds credit, unlike the Columbus game, to this point in the game. They are out shooting the Flyers at 
the 40 minute mark 27 17 but just can't convert a goal good sequence into the third period as the preds look to chip into the flyers lead first it's nito niederreiter who has been working wonders for the preds even though they haven't been able to win games with him so far and then yakov trenin who are both stopped by carter hart unfortunately by the end of the period but we'll get there with what led up to it the Preds did not have the greatest third period when they were in desperation mode for a goal since they only got five shots on net in that period and as it was eight minutes into the third period the backbreaker would go in as Kevin Hayes gets it over to Faraby who beats Soros stick side high on a goal he should have had it goes in Flyers all but winning this game for good three nothing just under four minutes left to go in regulation flyers take yet another penalty you think the preds aren't going to score and i guess the opposite happens in this case because van reemsdyke who took a tripping call on matt duchene it would be matt duchene who would snap the preds funk on the power play he gets the puck gets control of it and beats carter hart breaking the shutout cutting the lead to three one that's all the preds would get they wouldn't allow an empty netter so i guess that's a positive and they lose yet another game final was the score i just mentioned three one like i said that is now five losses in a row for a record of 0-4-1 since this team started this season 2-0 where was the fight in this team after one of your hard working heart of the blue line even though he doesn't play in the top two pairings mark borieski left with an injury i didn't see it can't even play inspired to play for a fallen teammate who leaves the game injured come on here's a stat for you that i just had to look up in their last 17 games played on north american ice they have won one game outright in regulation that was april 16th of last season against chicago if you want to find a more feudal streak than the current one the preds are on you have to go way back before the shutdown back to november of 2019 when between november 7th and november 21st this team went 0-5 and 1 during peter laviolette's lowest of the lows being the coach of this team and we all know what happened to his job security come the turn of the new year in 2020 dear god preds don't make me look up the last time you lost more than six in a row and for those who don't know i am a preds fan who has lived in british columbia his whole life i have lived in vancouver for the last 19 years so i get inundated with canucks hockey and if it wasn't for the fact that the canucks lost yet again this saturday night to start the season with six straight losses maybe the spotlight would be on the preds where it rightfully should be but the canucks are hogging it right now because they're even more futile than this team something has to give something has to be done before thursday's game against arch rival your neighboring state the st louis blues come into nashville and play inside bridgestone arena against you thursday night a major player a big name money player has to be scratched thursday night to send a message to the entire roster maybe somebody gets called up from milwaukee a major trade or maybe somebody who stands behind the players on a bench or somebody in the front office because you can't recycle this same lineup once again thursday and expect different results and because i cannot be there in person to lead this chance since i am in another country preds nation i would wholeheartedly encourage you a large segment of you who will be at that game on thursday if none of the four things any of them happen before thursday night's game i would totally encourage you to lead this chant throughout periods of the game and it's simple and it goes like this bring back trots bring back trots whether that's behind a bench or some special advisor in the front office for maybe eventually being announced for a transition but just having him in the front office to give the Preds a sense of hope that we're not going to continue to 
tolerate mediocrity. So that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. As always, click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really like it. You can find my social media and follow me as I rant during every Preds game because this streak looks like it's not going to end anytime soon. Find that by clicking on the channel name. Tell all your friends about Predemption and Bill Haslam's full ownership control of this team cannot come soon enough.